Today, Therese Winworth from the UW Stout Discovery Center, we connected, and they really are a great area resource to connect innovation to whatever they might need. And so we'll let Therese share her story, and I'm sure there'll be time for questions. Thank you. I want to introduce Lisa Montgomery. She's also from the Discovery Center. Um, the Discovery Center at UW Stout is a center that really was developed to help um, the university help connect to business and industry in the area. There's a um, NIST MEP Center, so we have a group of guys that work with manufacturers in the northern part of the state. And um, let's see, there's a uh, Basically, what we do in the CID, Center for Innovation and Development, is help folks move their product along the development stage. Um, and we leverage the university to do that. Um, that typically looks like a uh, academic, it's patterned along, or set up along the academic year, and uh, we use um, our instructors and our students to help um, move a product forward. So that can take the, that can look like industrial design, it can look like manufacturing engineering, it can look like um, drawing CAD files for someone who needs CAD files to get a quote for a manufacturer. Um, we also use the NIST MEP guys, we also have some Ameritai um, manufacturers that uh, we can use to connect to business and industry, to connect to manufacturers, to connect to materials guys. Um, and the host of people that come in are really diverse. Um, and we encourage everyone to come in. <laughs> so that means, that, means uh, that we reach uh, everyone from an idea to someone who has moved along the um, along the spectrum with their product. Um, and I guess a couple of good uh, things to do would be to talk about our examples. We have worked with a um, sharpening uh, company that works with all the large meat processors in the United States and they produce um, machines that sharpen knives for those industries. They had a scissor sharpening device that their father had developed. It was in the closet for years. They brought it to us to develop a look and feel for this thing. When we got it, and this turned out to be a class project, um, hooked to the industrial design uh, folks. Um, they um, took a look at what he had, brought in some manufacturing engineers, and then studied what industrial designers do, studied the industry. They wanted to focus on the salon industry where currently now uh, someone shows up, picks up your $400 shears, takes it away, and then re-delivers it in a week or so sharp. Um, this device will sit on their counter or in their back room. They wanted to know uh, how, how it would be used, should it be mounted, should it be on the table, should it be uh, look like art. What They studied the salons to take a look at that and came away, developed 40 drawings for the company. They narrow those down, pull together the things that they want, the client does, and then eventually they end up with a design. They get CAD files, they get um, we brought in a packaging person. We have packaging at Stout as well. Brought in a graphic designer. So this thing could be, when you look at it now, you can use it. You don't have to read the directions. Um, so it's ergonomic. It's uh, useful. So that was a client that came in on one end. And um, 
went out with CAD files, packaging, graphics, uh, and it was ready to go, ready to take to a manufacturer. So that was, um, that was a class project that probably went the full semester, so it was tied to the academic calendar. Some of, if, if folks need um, something outside of a academic <coughs> calendar, we can do that as well. Um, another fellow had a rotational grazing. He did rotational grazing where he moved um, animals through a pasture, so he had to move the fence constantly. He had developed a prototype that dispensed the fence and then picked it up again. Um, so he could move his animals every so many days. Um, we brought that through the manufacturing engineering process. They made it, uh, they made it collapsible. Uh, you had to do some assembly. So it fit in a box that reduced his uh, shipping costs and changed the material on it slightly to uh, save him about 30% from where he was to where he ended up being. Again, he came away with CAD files, and he also came away with man a co-manufacturer. So a fellow that he could start with a few and get them out in the market, test his market a little bit, and then, um, so that co-manufacturer really helped him. They already made something else out of this material. They would use his, um, they would manufacture his, <coughs> product in the off days, that kind of thing. So we, we kind of help folks along that path to test the market, to um, make things, the look and feel better. I would say those are our strengths um, in terms of class projects at least. Um, we've had a, a similar product to come in now it's a prototype, it's in the prototype stage. The fellow's been using it for 10 years in his business. Uh, so we're gonna run that through the manufacturing engineering process. They'll come away with a bill of materials. Uh, they'll come away with the CAD files. Um, we also have a window manufacturer, a small window manufacturer that was a company that started probably in the last year or two. And so they were building their business and like you all know, growing operationally, marketing, all that good stuff, but also looking at how they can streamline their process, you know, on the manufacturing side to save money and time. So they came to us with like a product development idea that they had, you know, for a <coughs> prototype to be built. So like some of the examples Tree shared, then that funneled into the classroom with a manufacturing engineering capstone capstone class that with higher level classes for our junior and seniors so you get a higher level expertise. For that to happen it does depend some if there is availability for projects because there's lots of requests so we work really closely with the faculty. Can be a timing thing, you know, sometimes it works if you're in a, a big rush. We do, like Therese mentioned, work on the academic calendar so we have to funnel it to spring and fall. I do have a project that came in just for Winterum that's a, that's a quick um, industrial design project for actually a company here in the Twin Cities. But they have an idea, they want to you know, analyze the look and the feel, so we've got a faculty member who's been working on that. In regards to the manufacturing um, engineering project with the window designer, um, that project he walked away with two different prototypes and they were potentials to save time and money. And then the students presented to the clients and, and talked about all the potential savings and what have you, so they walked away with some idea that they had, and then you know whether they choose to use it or not is up to them, because it is just a, you know, a technical assistant project. But it, it gave them some real goal to as far as taking that idea in their mind and making it into a concept. And if you are not, if you're in a rush, you can, there, we also do paid projects. We'll buy out uh, faculty members. They will draw in the best and the brightest out of their classrooms to work on these projects. Our kids um, walk away with something on their resume to use in future employment, um, and with, then we pay them for that project. But it's much less expensive than if you go to an industrial design firm. And Stout is known for hiring folks that have been in business and especially our uh, industrial designers have an inordinate amount of uh, manufacturing experience. And um, so that's really a, it's really been a, 
uh, help in a lot of ways for some other companies. Who else can we talk about here? Lisa? Well, I was going to mention too that UW Soap has a polytechnic designation, which is a special designation that basically says we do it's like two times the lab time. You know what I mean? So the focus educationally is we have twice the lab space, we have twice the lab time. So it's very much a hands-on university. So the students walk away with, they've had lots of time doing what they do. Some of our programs, like our packaging, a lot of those students are recruited in their sophomore year. You know, so sometimes getting packaging projects in can be a little more challenging because those students, they're snapped up. Yeah. So and they're in demand. They also have a lineup that are active. On your website, here. Jeff Dykes and Ann Cake and are you at Liberty to talk about what you did for those. You two. bet. Jeff Dykes, we did, um, well, we can show Jeff Dykes. I guess we've got a video on him. But um, was with IP research, right? Well, not only that, but connection so with manufacturers. Describe his products. And he had an idea. He's a fire captain, and he had an idea, and I was amazed this didn't already exist. He's got a little uh, satellite driven uh, compass in, that fits inside the fireman's helmet. Right now, when they firemen go into a burning building, if it fills up with smoke, they have no idea how to orient themselves. So he's uh, come up with this idea. We were able to make him, even just to begin with, the size and the shape, and then send it to manufacturers and say, can you get all the guts that you need to put in here into this size so it doesn't obliterate their already uh, <coughs> hindered view? He um, came back to us a number of different times with the, needing the right manufacturer, the um, just coaching along the way. Business coaching really helped him. And we can play that video, I hope, here. That's Jeff Dykes. My name is Jeff Dykes. I'm owner and founder of Northern Star Fire. I am a 20-year veteran of the fire service, currently a fire captain for the Eau Claire Fire Department. And I have invented the Northern Star which is a small eight directional compass that allows firefighters to maintain their orientation while working in low visi visibility environments. The inspiration behind the Northern Star is based on the fact that firefighters all over the world are char charging uh, into unfamiliar environments with zero visibility, uh, not knowing how to get their, get their way out. They're, they're very unsafe in those type of environments. So the Northern Star allows us to maintain our orientation, work more efficiently inside those fires, and rescue the people who we're sworn to protect. When I first initially met with a small business development center and we were sort of in that dead in the water stage, that's the first time I heard of uh, the Fab Lab here at UW Stout. And they recommended that I come over and I meet with uh, Gus and Mike and talk about what opportunities they might be able to present for us. And uh, their insight was instrumental in getting us forward. They were not able to take it on as a full-time project, but they gave me the network and the resources to move forward, answer those questions, get over those hurdles, and eventually get to the prototype development stages. Gus and Mike at the Fab Lab um, have helped me on several different levels from vetting out the idea to validating the, the technology, but also every single time I come back to them with a problem, whether it be uh, nickel plating our battery clip, or coming up with a plastics engineer, or coming up with a, the right components for the inside of Northern Star, they've been able to hook me up with the right engineers, the right entities to solve that problem and get the Northern Star into the marketplace. Uh, the Northern Star has been very rewarding to myself on many different levels. But uh, primarily as I travel around the country and, and the world for that matter and introduce firefighters to Northern Star, it's, it's very evident that the technology is going to be well embraced. Uh, most firefighters pick up the Northern Star, look at it for a second and go, huh, that's going to save our lives. And when I get that comment over and over again, it's incredibly rewarding because I know I've been able to develop an uh, 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 innovation piece here that is going to uh, make the fire service and my brothers and sisters in the fire service safer. Um, manufacturers in the area, so we use them as resources to say, you know, we need somebody that does this, works in this kind of material. Um, so there's a team of probably, I would say about 20 of people we can use, depending upon the product, um, for advice, for input, for services. So 
Um, so Therese, how do you measure success for tough. your office? It's tough. It's tough to measure I mean, what's, success. What, what Moving what them along a continuum. So um, what's your goal? Is it to create jobs? Is it to create products? Is it what, what do you see? Some of our funding your... is tied, yes, to like yeah, job development depending on the funding stream. Also, just interacts. You know, coming in, so many contacts, working with the business, providing IP, IP research. You know, just suggestions, recommendations on next steps, connections to potential manufacturers. Do they need a prototype developed? What does that look like? Who might they connect with? Can we assist them with it through the Fab Lab, which is Gus and Mike, which was mentioned in the video. Gus has four decades of experience working for manufacturing, leading manufacturing organizations, so he has a wealth of knowledge in the areas related to IP and product development and the, just the connections in the network. So great resource. And again, we get funding through the state and then we get some federal funding for different strings and different projects. So we can assist at a lower cost because that helps to underwrite, you know, and it's the state supporting small business and entrepreneurs. And so we're fortunate enough to be able to provide that service. And then be able to leverage the talent at the university yes. as well. We're able to pay um, professors over and above what they make, depending upon the ratio and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of talent there um, that we're able to yeah. leverage. So if and you have you clients... It's great for the um, students, too. Oh, oh it's great for the students. Sure. Certainly. That's part of our mission is to yeah, with make sure that students are involved. Yeah. Polytechnique designation and <laughs> UW Stelz placement rate is 97.4% which is one of the highest in the UW system. And we pride on ourselves on that because we really focus on the hands-on activities and then connecting the Discovery Center. One of our goals is connecting with business and industry. And so we do that through internships. We do that through faculty student-led projects. We do that through many other venues like internships. Yeah. Another good uh, service that we can do that we've done for a number of different <laughs> clients is they have a current product that's addressing a current market. We'll take that to uh, a group of students, and this particular client wanted that particular item redesigned or um, ideated for fishermen, for hunters, for campers. So these kids came up with different scenarios for a very successful product in one market right now, they wanted that <coughs> developed for other segments of the market, and that was very successful. And that cost them nothing. Because so, it was a freshman, sophomore, they didn't come away with designs, CAD system, any of that. Have, is it limited to Wisconsin businesses? We are somewhat limited to Wisconsin One, businesses. Yeah. We have a like funding stream we can use. Yeah, that, um, that can be, we've done some. But, so I have, a client that's Minnesota based and they've done similar stuff at Mankato right. where they have a product yeah. but they want an innovation of one component right. so they've retained a similar organization at Mankato right. and student driven but right. it isn't developing the product it's right. an enhancement to some existing possible for a Wisconsin organization to come to you with that I, I would say we could work with that. It probably would be a paid project. So you're from to, Minnesota? Yes. No, I'm talking about if I, if we had a Wisconsin based that has a you know some sort of gizmo. Yeah. And they want to enhance it. Yep. And come to you and say, hey, can you help develop this? Or here's my idea, there, yeah. here's how we are and what we need to move to this. Yep. There's a lot of factors into mm -hmm. it as far as you know if it qualifies for in class. You know, if that faculty member has openings, and then you know as entrepreneurs, timing is key. So if you're in, in a rush and you need something done immediately, then we may not be able to tie, you know what I mean? There's a lot of things, so we can't just say blanket, yes, we can do that. It's, it's very customized per person. If you're, if you, time's not of the essence, then we can definitely work with you. We might be able to get it in the summer or what have you. There's also students and faculty that are willing to do it out of the classroom. And then that has a lot more vitality to be able to move quicker. How, how does that part of it look, the, the paid for part? Like if I'm from Minnesota, so if I had a product that I wanted to launch for you guys or help with, 
how does that work? Does it kind of pay as you go or? Typically we do 50% up front. If it's a paid project out of class, it would be typically 50% up front, 50% up, uh, upon completion. And we really encourage you to be involved in the whole process along the way. You introduce the project to the students. You you are part of the process. But I think I think you could go you could come in through our center for innovation and development and get a free analysis. Certainly, you know what I mean, and the IP and just some of the, the general advice. And then as a part of that package of general advice, then we might be like, okay, here we have this program. We can look and meet with this faculty member and see what they're available, you know what I mean, and kind of right. build a customized option that might work for you. Is, right. the, is there some, I, I know it's probably kind of impossible, but some sort of a price range on, you know, you got an idea um, written down on a sheet of paper, I mean, is... You know, it's, but it's ranged anywhere from $300 to, uh, I'd say, 15000 yeah. depending okay. upon you but know, I would what it, what's involved. Say the bulk that I've seen are probably two to five-ish. Okay. And, and you know what it's going to be it, at the it, beginning. You get scored right. out. Right. It, it just depends on what you see on the front yeah. side, yeah. for sure. Okay. And, uh, you know, and uh, some of that depends upon what you need. If it's, right. if it's manufacturing engineering, it's much less expensive because those kids are doing capstones. They need a project to do as part of their capstone. So okay. we need you, okay. you know. <clears throat> so you're paying for materials only. Kind of. Okay. Yep. And they do on the those. front end, and then if you need actual like takeaways, then that's where a little bit of contracting happens out of the classroom. You know what I mean? Okay. So we have projects that phase one, two, three. I have a company involved one that's on phase three of their statistical analysis project. You know, for a certain project line, and, and they're looking at the mean analysis and within so much as far as because they're healthcare, and so they have to have all of their their manufacturing has to be very very accurate. Done both. So you help me develop a better mouse trap. Right. And now we need to sell. Now you need to sell. Is that something you get Marketing involved in? Marketing is rough for us. So that's not something that I that's would not, not your highest. I would not issues. recommend that. No. I mean we can give you like general areas. Market segments. Sometimes people can working with students can really get ideas about what uh, the the 20 to 30 demographic is buying and looking at and how they're thinking and that so kind of thing. Studies. Right. But not, I would say marketing, no. Um, just because I think marketing is such a changing field. All those kids that are, you know, uh, do you need um, social media? Do you need print? Do you need, you know, all so of those. Not connecting people to market channels, We're not, distribution channels. Mm -hmm. I would say more, more the early end. Which you is know, a real need for us, though. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have any ideas, I'd like to hear them. Well, I, thought, well, I have had friends that went to school that they have graphic design program. Or they, they do, do yes. So yes. It's not that you need but to be like, cradle to like grave. Or sure development or to right. help you with your social yeah. media. But it's kind of like then with a marketing campaign, then you've got to have the communication strategy. You know, and so we don't have one program that encompasses all oh, of that. Okay. So yeah. we can, and we can definitely give advice from like market segment, target market. Have you thought about this product serving this in this manner? Like Jeff Dyke's idea was initially for firefighters, and then through the process, then scuba diving. You know what I mean? There's other avenues that you don't think of, and then you connect and you network, and people are like, have you ever thought of this? No, I didn't think of this. And so then he's got scuba divers out on emergency searches that can use his product as well. So there's always like it's ever evolving. Go ahead. The product range for the, that I'm hearing is through the examples is sort of like the size of a red box and smaller in general. Is that a is that a um, accurate statement or? You know, in terms of product development, in terms of of enhancing that product or getting advice about that product. You know, if you need somebody to manufacture a, a small piece for that thing, yes, I would say. Um, well, what about something size of the table? Or I mean, your 3D printers or, or your size of projects only go so big. so big. Our 3D printers are not huge. Okay. They're small. And so, but we've got a huge uh, plasma cutter. Um, we've got a huge router. Um, Laser cutters. So is all of this all of this directed at manufacturing? What's the breadth of your of your offering? Much of it is um, aimed at manu manufacturing. Mm -hmm. okay. 
services. Um, we haven't done many services that I can think of. We've got like app development. I mean, I've We've done with, some app development. Our, and the faculty is open to that because that's been kind of an emerging area from a marketing <coughs> standpoint. So some of it's just meeting with faculty and saying, hey, are you open to this if these projects should come in? Because we're starting to get inquiries. And then like you mentioned, there's graphic design. So what does that look like? And then of course, if you're going to go into the classroom, we have to be really respectful of does your product need or your project needs does that fulfill the student's curriculum from a faculty perspective? Because they have to own true to the kids and what they're trying to get from the program. So that's where it's just really trying to mesh the two. We've got a strong packaging program too, which we've uh, attempted to use. <laughs> they already have a pipeline of people that are wanting their services. Um, they don't need our projects necessarily, um, but we can get advice uh, from from their faculty and students in terms of what it would cost, kind of cost analysis, um, which is a real strength of their program. Did you? Yeah, I was just going to point out, my, <coughs> one of my sons is a graduate of the packaging program. All right. And he did some of these projects. projects. So he was on the student end. It was right. a very, a really a wonderful experience. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Did it help him get his first job? Uh, I would say yes. Yeah. Did it help him move up? After yes. he wanted his first job, yes. you know. Despite the usual point. Despite, despite <laughs> 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 you didn't hear him. Yeah, you really are not a are you? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're not a packaging person? Are you a packaging person? No. Okay. Marketing manager. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, did you Other hire? question over there? <laughs> um, just, can you do just the analysis uh, valuation? Do you do any valuation of of what a product, when you do that market study, can you do just that part of it, even if you don't do the rest of the project? So in packaging, because I have something in packaging now, and can you do that that piece of it, the data piece of how big this can be or where it can all be used type of thing? That on the uh, academic year and your need for it sooner ra rather than later, perhaps, um, and it's up to the faculty as yeah. well. Right. It would just be sitting down and scoping what you specifically mm -hmm. need to go to the faculty and saying, do you have a course that fits this? And are you open and to what's it? What's the timeline? Yeah. Okay. And you know, this whole business is free until it's not free. Right. right? That's, what it is. So, <laughs> so That's why we're so the, general. <laughs> I have. So the idea submission form will get you a okay. good analysis okay. coming in. Very good analysis. It will also get you whatever your product is, what our potential for you is, right? And in, in, in terms of what we have at the university. And then also it'll get you, if you need them, connections to manufacturers that we have connections with. Do you have a lot of manufacturers in the area because of what you do? I mean, when you say yes, connections, we've got too, a lot injection of, molding is we right. have plastics injection, uh, plastics <coughs> engineering at Stout, so we have a lot of those. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of small manufacturers, not large manufacturers. Well, we also have the Manufacturing Outreach Center, which Therese mentioned, which is a subset of the Discovery Center. So we have all these different, you know, WEDC, the idea to prototype, which is this program for entrepreneurs. The Manufacturing Outreach Center has like six to eight project managers that go out work and work within small to mid-sized manufacturers throughout Northwest Wisconsin. So they'll do lean, They'll do, you know, operations assessment. They'll do strategic planning. So we have relationships. We're all connected, work in the same building. So we have a whole database of manufacturing connections that way too. Stout. I don't remember her name, but there's a woman at Stout that does lean consultations with manufacturers that a number of my clients have used with, oh. just with great success. Yeah. I mean, I a lot of my clients. Well, like the ISO 9000, see it as a burden, and others yeah. that have used this woman, yeah. it's like, no, well, this is how we're going to grow our business, and they <coughs> are big believers yeah. because of the very practical yes. use of it. And right. it isn't just a system, it's a system of the purpose. Yeah, we, we don't concentrate on theory so much as we do hands-on. How are you going to get this done? 
Um, there's also Export Tech, which Jeff Dykes is in, in the midst of right now, and that's our program that kind of helps small business if you're thinking of going international. That's a program, there's a charge for that, but then that helps you to learn the guidelines to take your business internationally. So that's something through our Manufacturing Outreach Center as well, is another resource. And we're using um, the food Dr. Kim is reaching out to food manufacturers. He's developed a process to identify listeria and salmonella in-house, so you don't have to, um, and to also test your ingredients coming in, so that uh, it saves you an inordinate amount of money to be able to do that stuff in-house, rather than $200 for every sample you send to a lab somewhere. Um, so that's another way in which we're working with and businesses like, and in the like area. A profit thing, right? A professional right. education, so a continuing education. The faculty member identified a need within industry. Mm -hmm. So then we have another subdivision called professional education, and then we'll develop curriculum for an industry on updates, and that would be a quality training. Right. And then we mark it out to that food industry and say, hey, here's what we've developed. This is an upcoming need. We can help you with your quality analysis. So. There's a lot of different options. Go ahead. So how do you uh, avoid ending up in a conflict of interest sort of thing where you're developing two competing products within your own, you know, within your network there? Is well, that we have not run across you know, that. You yeah. <laughs> not at this, yeah, I mean, I'm sure But we'd be up front with you for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. Almost have to create a Chinese wall. <laughs> So you would or assign that. staff or right. yeah. communicate that. There'd be ways to manage that for sure. Other questions? So talk about UW funding. UW funding, meaning? So just from the state, tuition, all of that, are you getting the funding you need from our fair state? Well, um, you don't have to be politically correct. I don't have to be politically correct. <laughs> um, I would say that the University of Wisconsin-Madison has been a flagship in the nation for education in so many areas. And when a professor gets NSF funding to develop stem cells or whatever they're developing, if they leave the state, that funding goes with them. And so does all of the spin-off businesses that are created as a result of that. I think we need to be very careful about what we do. It, and I'm not here to say that academia doesn't have ways to tighten things up. We do, as every business does. But we need to be very careful about innovation and moving forward. Um, so far, we've not had any, any cuts. But our maintain within our division, within our division, you know, we can't speak. To but we have a hard thing. time keeping uh, hold of stars, young guys that are doing their deal and are willing to teach others how to do that. Uh, they're going to go out state, and they're coming to Minnesota. Believe it or not, <laughs> is is there a legal reason that schools do not? take a cut after a certain level of success, especially when you're already working. You come up with a new iteration for a manufacturer that's already existing and now they made millions of dollars off of it and they never have to go back to you and pay anything out for a public service. I know, but is there not some, no, with, with the these innovations? The University centers? of Minnesota makes gazillions off of patents and sure. more so does some of it so does like the plant negotiation. Yeah. Technology, I had a client that we had a contract with Marquette University to, it had to do with bugs. And, you know, they cut a deal. You know, they were going to invest. But they're more private, aren't they? Yeah. Well, it was a nonprofit. But yeah, but yeah. I mean, so there are, state there are, there's a group out of uh, Madison that captures all the intellectual mm -hmm. property of professors that create. So that, there is funding. But, but that would entity. be, but I'm saying I come to you and you sign an NDA and this is my baby and so I'm going to be making all the money off of it. There's no professor making money off of my idea. He might but have some improvements. 
they contributed and that would be they one funding. So then, so be then some they are, is mechanism. that part of it? Is they are part of your project forever? Is Unless they, assi if they are part of the patent, if they contribute to the claim to the patent and they contributed something that's an improvement, they're on it and we need to have some sort of assignment. Okay. But they that's sign right. off at the okay. beginning so yeah, that right. they don't. Right. Yeah. But out of your, the goodness of your heart and uh, then you, know, you do a, you yeah. then, then I build a state and you push me something or you put that up and funnel money through the college. Receive uh, a percentage of everything. <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> you, got, you got a copy of that on um, video. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is um, a great service. I mean, I just happened to know Jeff Dykes called me five years ago or so. He really just had the idea. If you scroll down, there's a, another woman that has a baby powder product that, yeah. uh, and she recently, <coughs> her organization reached out. So these are real live things that people are making happen because of your good work. So. And Katie, her, uh, how we helped her was identify her ingredients and also find her manufacturer that could make her a small amount until she could get a little larger, and now they're able to, we're able to find her somebody that can, she's afraid of what the internet might do, you know? <laughs> so, so thank you so much for Thanks being for here. For uh, go out and uh, prosper, sign up for next month, and really encourage anybody that uh, uh, has life that involves pressure because that's what uh, we're going to talk about next month and I think it really will arm us with tools to help us stay healthy. So thanks for coming and have a great day.